Hello, everybody, and welcome to the next lecture, which is types of memory. And I think this is going to be the last one for a while, so um, enjoy it while it's there, I think. Okay, so we'll be looking at types of memory today. Why do we need types of memory? Well, if you think back to our classic von Neumann architecture, all the way back in the first uh, lesson in this series, You'll remember the data and programs need to be stored in a computer system and we need to store them in memory. So we're going to divide uh, into two categories. We're going to have main memory, which contains RAM, which we often just use interchangeably with the term main memory, but they're not necessarily the same. And we've got ROM, which is another type of main memory. And then we've got the second category, which is secondary storage. And this is everything like your hard disk drive, your memory sticks, your DVDs, which are used for more long-term storage. So I will explain the difference between main memory and secondary storage in a bit more detail as we go through this. Okay, so we have RAM, random access memory. And often we do use RAM and main memory interchangeably. Uh, when we refer to main memory as RAM, this is a little informal, so you have to be careful sometimes. But this is the kind of classic memory stick that goes into the computer to provide storage for our data and programs while the computer is running. This is a fairly standard RAM module to place into the motherboard and provide more RAM. And this essentially does the same thing but it's more expensive, looks a little bit more fancy. Uh, this is for gaming systems and enthusiasts who want to play around with their RAM settings, maybe try and get it to run a little bit faster. But basically, they do the same job. RAM is directly accessed by the CPU, and it's used for temporary storage. And it can only be used for temporary storage because RAM is volatile. That means if it loses power, the contents are lost. So you've probably encountered that. You're working on your assignment, your homework. Uh, there's a problem with the computer. It freezes, it crashes, it gets turned off. When you turn the computer back on, you've lost whatever you're working on. If you haven't saved it to secondary storage, it's going to be gone. Because when there's no power, you lose the contents of the RAM. So without power everything's gone. Now, what do we use RAM for? Well, again, RAM holds all the instructions and data that you're currently using. Remember, it has to get transferred from secondary storage to RAM before it can move on and be sent to the CPU. RAM holds billions of storage locations, and each one has its own unique address. Again, that goes all the way back to the first lesson. So each one of these sticks has potential to store billions of pieces of data. Each has its own address. Each can be uh, accessed by the CPU. So the other type of main memory is ROM, read-only memory. And we can usually find that located on the motherboard. And again, it's just a little chip, a little piece of silicon on the motherboard. Oh, I can just about fit that in. That's excellent. So read-only memory means that the data cannot be changed, overwritten, or removed. It's fixed. And it's usually fixed by the manufacturers. ROM, unlike RAM, is non-volatile. So your RAM, you'll lose the contents when you turn the computer off. The ROM is fixed. You can turn the computer off, turn it on. It's the same contents. But you, the user, aren't going to be adding or subtracting things from the ROM while it's using. It usually, or traditionally, holds important instructions for example, how to boot your computer when it's first turned on. So those first few seconds when you turn it on, what does your computer do? How does it access the hard drive? How does it talk to the keyboard or the mouse or the monitor? Just for those first few seconds, that data is stored in your ROM. And that might only be just a few megabytes in size. But it's important data. Nowadays, things are a little bit more complicated. Of course, things always get more complicated. You can technically change some types of ROM. 
Again, if the manufacturer releases new instructions to make the board run better, you might want to change what's on it. You might want to alter the settings of your computer at a low level. But for your GCSE exam, it's read-only memory, and the data cannot be changed, overwritten, or removed. So we'll keep that simple. Non-volatile, and traditionally used to store important data, for example, how to boot up your computer. That gives us on to the next type of memory, which is secondary storage. So the problem with RAM is that it only holds the data while there's power. So you need something that can hold lots of data even when the computer is turned off. This is why secondary storage is always non-volatile. Even when the power is off, secondary storage devices remember the contents. So we can use it for long-term data storage. And these are some of the most popular types of secondary storage. First of all, we have magnetic. This includes things like your hard disk drive, older floppy disks, magnetic tape, anything that where the data, the ones and zeros, is stored using a magnetic form. The next one along is what we call LASH, or solid state memory. And these are actually circuits that look a bit like RAM modules, except they're non-volatile. They always store the contents, even for a long time. So, however, the disadvantage of flash memory or solid state memory is that it is a lot slower than RAM, even though it has the advantage of being non-volatile. Next, we have optical storage, such as your CD, your DVD, or your Blu-ray. These are called optical storage because they rely on light, laser light, to write the data to the disks and read the data. Depending on the color of the laser, you can store more or less on a disk. An old style CD used a kind of red frequency laser light. That could only store a fairly limited amount of data. Whereas the newer Blu-ray DVD drives use a blue-violet laser that's much higher frequency, so you can fit a lot more data into the same physical size. And last, we've got something very important, especially nowadays, what we call cloud storage. So these are services provided by people like Dropbox, OneDrive, Google Drive, Apple's iCloud, and a lot of professional storage companies, including Microsoft and Amazon and lots of other people. And this is where you just save it somewhere on the internet, in the cloud, you don't know where your documents are, you don't know how they're stored, but you can access them through the interface anywhere in the world as long as you have a working internet connection. And all these types of secondary storage have their own advantages and disadvantages, which we'll look at in class. Okay, in summary, we've got main memory. And when we think of main memory, we usually think of RAM. So technically, the type of RAM that we use for main memory is DRAM, Dynamic Random Access Memory, but that's not really important. And the type of DRAM we use mostly at the moment is called DDR4. That's the newest, fastest type of memory. We've also got ROM. And unlike RAM, ROM is non-volatile, but it's only usually quite small and just holds these important instructions, and it's not going to be changed or altered by the user. RAM can only hold the contents while we have power, and it holds the instructions and data that we're using right now. So I'm using PowerPoint, I'm running PowerPoint, I'm using my screencasting software, so they are all in RAM. Whereas other programs that I'm not using, like Excel, are not stored in RAM, they're going to be stored in the secondary storage. Secondary storage is non-volatile, and it's for long-term data storage. So if we think about it, we've got something like a hard disk drive or a solid state drive. And this holds all your programs and data and your files. When you double click on something to start it, it gets transferred to your RAM. And your RAM is smaller in capacity, but it's much faster. And that can feed the details onto your CPU, into your cache, into your registers. Okay. So your hard disk drive is usually very big, 
but quite slow. RAM is smaller but faster. And then onto your CPU, which has got the smallest but the fastest type of access. Your CPU and your RAM don't remember things when you turn the power off. But your hard disk drive is non-volatile. It'll store the contents for a long time, even without power. So we'll go into more detail about that in class. Uh, hopefully you enjoyed this. And I will see you around, guys and girls.